Okay. I've been trying to look for some of the best solutions for portable audio. I've covered a few headphones that could be very good contenders, such as the Sony lineup from the 7506 to the V6 and also the V7s and the CD900 STs. I've also covered headphones like the Kos, uh, Porta Pros, and the KPH30Is. And I would even reasonably say the Bear Dynamic DT770, if you get the 80 ohms, they're a pretty good contender for what could make a beautiful commute uh, for music listening experiences. Um, so the only issue here is that, to me, they are easily within reach, but they're not very easy to manage. Now hear me out. You got to plug them in. And at the same time, most phones, okay, I have a G6. Most phones can't power very heavy, amazing headphones. Another thing too is that most headphones are too big. And if you want to get something slim, you may be cutting a few corners here and there. Or you may be getting them from brands that are not audiophile level. To the point where you may be now reaching over into IEMs. Which for me, I really don't like. Personally, I don't like IEMs too much. But I'll be covering one of them. That's not really an IEM, it's... Well, it is, but it isn't. <clears throat> but for now, I wanted to do the videos in order. And also talk about my experiences of trying to daily commute them. Or, or daily use them. I can't English tonight. But just strictly remember this, that the goal is to get really good audio on the go. And I'm trying to do this with headphones that probably were never meant for it. But we're very close to fitting the bill of what I wanted. So right here, <clears throat> you can kind of see it from the side anyways. I'm going to be looking at the Neumann NDH20s. They're a closed back dynamic headphone. And of course, for daily use, we can't as audiophile Enthusiasts use semi-open or open-back headphones because the sound's going to come in there. It's going to come into our ears and it's going to ruin that experience of listening to music, which we don't want. Closed-backs creates a little room for us and that room is our own. It's personal. It's not going to be shared with other people on the bus or the train. And it's definitely not going to be a nuisance to co-workers in the workplace. Now, the unboxing experience is pretty amazing. It's pretty... No, well, I want to say standard. I was going to say standard. It's not. But you just wouldn't expect what you get inside here if you've never seen a review or an unboxing of these. There is a user manual in here. You get two kinds of cables, a carry bag, and also the headphones. The two kinds of cables you get are a coiled one, and a straight one. I use the straight one for personal use, uh, personal use for, for, for use abroad. I use the straight one. The uh, coiled cable I might be now starting to use here in the studio. <clears throat> Gonna talk about this in a minute, but you get this carry bag, which has no logos or printing or anything on it, no name or branding, and you get the headphones. Now, the headphones are very similar in size to a Bear Dynamic. And not only that, but I would even say that they are bare dynamics on steroids. I feel as though that these are what I would have thought 770s would sound like. It's kind of weird to put it that way or word it that way. But I guess it's because a lot of the time when reviewers try to review a headphone and we, we don't play you the sounds because uh, we may not have the means to, or like such as myself, I, I, I'm just lazy to pull out the, the mini DSP here's, I really should, but I need to make these videos short <laughs> and I'm trying. But the thing is these, these specific cans are kind of what I would have thought that Bear Dynamic DT770s would sound like. Spacious, pinpoint accuracy, such elevated highs, a very impactful bass, 
in a closed back in a very decently sized form factor. Like the, the, this, this, that's my hand. Okay. And that's closed. That's like, that's pretty, that's pretty fucking small. Okay. Now here's these, uh, these, uh, hard cases that you can buy from eBay. I don't know if they sell a style like this, like locally here in Canada, but these were actually for, um, these were a case that came with the T1s when I bought them. And because they fit bears, I wanted to see if they would fit these, and they do. Actually, surprisingly well. Not a lot of slack in there. So that's pretty good. Now, I think somebody will talk about the build and a few other things like i know that these are actually a shell that's shared amongst um among um, not only the ndh20s but also a sennheiser model of some sort and apparently these have the better sound signature and that's something i want to talk about more is the sound and i would agree here that these are a good sounding closed back headphone now the one thing the one thing that I wanted to use these mainly for is monitoring, mixing, and mastering. I wanted these to become my new reference. And it's not only because of a Z's review, okay? But also because I want to venture into more modern headphones. This is a more modern headphone. And it's from a company that makes microphones that are used for a professional use. So I was kind of hoping that it would fit the bill for that. It definitely does. You can't see my face right now, but I'm smiling. Because I want to use these more. But there's a few things that make me avoid it. So one of those things is definitely the weight. These are actually very hefty headphone. Um, They're not... It's not a deal breaker kind of heavy, but these are definitely heavier than what I'm normally used to, which are AKG K240s. I use the monitors. These are a modded version. I think I've covered these in a video. I hope I did. But um, I love these things. I forever always will. And if it isn't as light or lighter than the K240s, there's some concerns because now I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle wearing them for a long time. And that's something that is probably one of the uh, bad things about these headphones. I said, I'd talk about sound, but you know what? Comfort first there. You can't wear these for a long time. You can wear them longer than most headphones, but definitely I get stressed on the top of my head here. In terms of the cups, they're actually very reasonably sized but they don't have a lot of depth. They really don't. So for some, the, the depth may be an issue if your ears point out quite a bit. But for me, the biggest thing I think is the size of the hole. Some of my friends have bigger sized ears and that is an issue for them. But besides that, um, they're comfy. They're a very nice, very... In good in between of the bare T1 black pads in terms of their soft velour feel. This is a more, not coarse, it's a more fine velour. The coarse velour would be the bare dynamic pads. The, these are very, very fine. Um, and they're very, they're a lot more softer than stiff. Feels like memory foam, which I'm going to assume is. <laughs> Okay, and they make a really good seal, and that seal leads to its really good sound that I can definitely hear, and nobody else can. When these are on my head, I don't know how much attenuation there is on these, but it's definitely along the levels of the D248s, which is going to be no less than 20. Even though these should be breathable, it's velour and it's uh, memory foam. I think the memory foam is dense to the point where it can help with that seal of keeping sound out. And it does a really good job of that. The base is kept and it's very, very tight. 
It's not a lot of sub bass that I can recall, especially the fact that I was on a bus or a train most of the time when I used these. But the one thing that I really loved, I think, was still just a soundstage. It is, it's actually ridiculously big for a closed back. It is, it is along the levels of, if, if this is 580 or 600, okay, HD 600, HD 580, and then these are DT 770, DT 990, <laughs> my hands might go off, might go off of the screen. These are definitely a little bit wider than even 990s, the vintages or even the new. Now, besides its wits, there's surprisingly a lot of good accuracy. And that's not something that I was expecting, I think, in terms of the imaging for the fact that when you have so much space, when a headphone is so capable of that, you lose the detail. And it's because of that width. And, and this is able to retain that. So, of course, the, 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 the curious question is what happens if you do a pad swap with these to even increase the width even further? Will the detail still hold or is this as far as it can go? I'm thinking that's as far as it can go for if the depth is already not really that deep. There must be a reason for it acoustically. I know that the driver itself is also kind of like offset. It's not actually like in the middle. It's kind of like raised a little bit. And I'm assuming that has to do with their average measurements of like human ears maybe. So they're not like directly on your ear in the middle from like the feel and also the look of it if you were to take the pads off these headphones. But that mid-range in that top end, the top end is just so airy. It's, it's wonderful. And the fact that these are closed backs, you have all of that to yourself and it won't bleed or leave the headphone. And the mid-range is just neutral. Like everything about it is neutral. And to the point where you may think that a neutral headphone wouldn't be musical. These are. NDH20s are musical headphones, and I really enjoy sounds that come out of these. It's just, it's just amazing. And the build is very, very premium. I don't think I talked about this part yet, but um, they thought about a few things, such as how you would transport these <clears throat> or even store them. You could fold them like this, okay, which is like very typical of most headphones for travel and you can also make them flat like this i did this earlier so you can put them face down on your on your desk or you can put them in a case and if i were to fold these like so it's easier for me to drop this in the case or in the little bag here all that space at the top there bada bing bada bop Got a headphone for the go. Again, they do fit on this hard case and there's actually enough room just to fit the straight cable that I've tied up here inside. Now, again, these headphones were not designed for portable use, but they have the features of a portable headphone, such as the means for them to fold. They also do have a very ergonomic and comfortable fit. The headband, questionable, but I mean, I can bear with it. I typically would have a hat on when I go out. So I don't really feel that, but if I'm in the studio, I kind of do. And I think it's those little features like this that make me really love this headphone. Because it's just not something that I, a headphone that maybe shouldn't be portable would have. And another thing too is detachable cable. So it uses a 2.5 connector that's a very similar locking solution such as the uh i think it's the mx 50s uh, i might be getting this wrong i know that sennheiser has not sennheiser um darn dude audio technica they have a connector somewhat like this where it's a proprietary um 
plug at the very end. So 2.5 is common, but they have like a little part here with a notch that you have to twist in and it goes deeper than you think. <clears throat> so that's something that I don't like, but it's at the same time, not something that I'm mad about. The thought is what counts. And these are a detachable cable. So that means if your dog bites on these or it goes through a few rounds underneath the chair, it's going to be fine. You can buy another one. But the one thing I'm uncertain about with uh, new headphones like these compared to the old ones, um, like my K240s or the Bear Dynamic DT990 vintages, is what is replaceable. I don't know what the accessible parts would be, and especially because this is made in Germany, I'm a little bit concerned about... Or it's not made in Germany. I think I think it is made in Germany. I think it's a German company. Um, I'm I'm just not so sure. Oh, sure, sure. I'm not so sure what parts I have the ability to purchase um, from this company. So, knowing that this is a sister company of Sennheiser, might be wrong. Maybe I can get the hinges. Maybe I can get the headband. Maybe I can replace the head strap here if that ever wears out. Which I'm going to assume it doesn't. It might be a mixture of foam and air in there. So that'll last a little longer. But it's definitely these pads. I don't know how much these pads are. I also don't know what the lifespan of these pads are. So to cut this short, I tried to use these for portable use, which is probably what these were never designed for. But they do a very freaking good job. They offer a means for me to hear sound at the level that I would expect for especially a price point like this. If I haven't mentioned it already, these are around a $600 headphone. I got these used and I'm happy with them. They do the job and I've wanted these to be my reference. But the one thing for sure that always stops me is the weight. One, two, three, four, five. One, two... Three, four, five. So anal about that. But anyways, the weight is definitely a factor that uh, I kind of don't like. And I don't want to be wearing a hat in the studio just to be comfortable in using them. Could be very, very nitpicky. Honestly, it, it probably is. But I digress. The K240s will still forever be a reference for me, but these are definitely going to become something that I will have to consider in the future if... I want to continue to get good sound because these make good sound. And I would think even better than the K240s. I believe these go as low as 5 or 10 hertz up to 30,000 kilohertz. I think. So these have such really good resolution. Yeah, 5 hertz to freaking 30,000 kilohertz. Like that's ridiculous. And the opinions is only 150 ohms. And super duper efficient, mind you. So I can plug these into my phone, no problem. Plugged, plugged them into my DAP, DAP, no problem either. It's the Fio X3 Gen 2. Excuse me. But these do a phenomenal job at what I wanted them to be for and also what I wanted them to not be for. So that's it. I'm going to make another video, like basically back to back, but um, that's the NDH20s. Very, very sorry it took a while for the video about these to come out. Um, I've been spending more time with the headphone before just making a video about it. Like the first video I made on these, um, it definitely was just me being like, man, this is cool. But I really... I'm happy I had a little bit more time to spend with them before making the video. All right, on to the next one. I'll see you guys then, or whenever that happens.